So uh, I knew that before test day, I need to get acclimatized to what uh, would happen on test day. And so uh, for five days right before test day, as in the Monday to Saturday, about five, six days, I'd taken a test right at the time when I was supposed to take on test day. I personally believe the GMAT is a game of inertia. I mean, the faster you go and the harder you go in the shortest particular span of time, that really helps a lot. I recommend the top 1% mocks because the GMAT level can't go higher than that. That is what I, I spoke to a lot of other students that were at top 1% and otherwise also top 1% mocks are absolutely the benchmark. Hi, just a second, so stick. Uh, so as you can see, score report as well. Sixth of November had a seven fifty score, fifty forty one, and um, my colleague Natasha already spoke to him, and we, I think they had a brilliant interaction around this. But I haven't been able to speak, so I really invite him right now. So, hi, first of all, congratulations for the score hi. you actually got. And uh, just let me, you know, understand the entire prep you had and your challenges and mm -hmm. overall how you went about it, what were your strong and weak areas, was quant a stronger area than verbal, did you benefit more in verbal than in quant, whatever. And then your prep experience and exam experience will go in order. So please tell. So uh, I actually enrolled for the classes in uh, July. But uh, I, I specialize in domestic direct taxes uh, and I'm a practicing chartered accountant. So um, I had a lot of uh, work pressure from July to October for compliances and advisory services to my clients. And so uh, my classes were a bit haywire. It wasn't as consistent as you'd recommended throughout. I'd taken the self-paced course. But I was fairly uh, confident with uh, my quant skills apart from two or three topics, the complex counting, uh, inequalities in mods, and, and 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 a few more topics. So I'd gone through those classes and I'd gone through each and every verbal class, the basics, uh, the detailed classes, everything, and, and went about practice with verbal as you recommended, because I'm not the most avid reader. So that, I, so I was uh, skeptical about my verbal skills since the beginning. So verbal really, really helped me. For quant, I'd, I did, because at the last, done quant properly just solving problems back in school uh not through college too much and not through my ca journey either mm -hmm. so i'd gone through the basics videos and apart from that for uh the the topics which i just mentioned i i saw your lectures as well and solved all the questions including the 700 to 800 level problems whenever i had time maybe 20 30 questions set um uh, throughout in a staggered manner mm -hmm. and that was mostly my approach so so when you say verbal was a weaker area compared mm -hmm. to quant -fib, how did you really think that did you go with the schedule the way I did. Just... I did I went with the schedule to the dot uh, started with uh, RC like you'd mentioned in the mm -hmm. self-paced uh, module uh, proceeded with a bit of CR then to SC and solved the PDFs like you'd mentioned in order solved mm -hmm. about 10 to 12 verbal sectional tests on the portal as well the top one percent portal and i think that yeah. was really helpful i mean a few passages uh which are a little longer than i thought on the gmat that really helps you uh, prepare yourself for the worst possible day and right. train yourself to how you're supposed to take the test so that really helped me i'd also gone through the youtube links you provided for uh, AWA and IR and I think those were okay. really helpful just just uh, watching them at 2x and devoting maybe an hour hour and a half right before test day really puts you in the zone for what to expect on test day for those two sections as well and so, uh, in verbal what was your weakest area SC, CR, RC or what would you so say initially it was RC because I was I was fairly confident with SC because I'd taken the SAT at the undergrad level and all and SC and grammar was uh fairly good for me but uh, i i was very skeptical of rc at first but after the two, after the first two or three uh, videos that you provided mm -hmm. i think i started uh, my, as in the lack of my reading speed really started uh, to as in the impact of it really started getting reduced and uh, it it started helping me by just looking uh, by just reading at my own pace not wanting to read faster all of those advice mm -hmm. uh, that you'd given i mean that really helped me and initially right before test day i think uh i found the flaw section of cr really challenging for me and so i was focused on that i solved the specific flaw uh 
section portion that you'd given uh, on the, the topic wise test yeah. Yeah, yeah the topic wise test also and the pdf that you provided in a timed manner so i did 12 question blocks and right before test day i had taken the test on a monday i think on sunday i had mm. solved about six such blocks in approximately 17 minutes per block for the floor questions those were my main uh, problem areas for work. right yeah. so did you have anything unusual on the test day and describe the test experience uh, like verbal first quant first and yeah, yeah. any nerves so, any anxiety anything unusual experience wise and then question wise right so uh I'd, I'd spoken to uh, the team at Top 1% also, including my coordinator, Priyansha, and uh, a few of the other faculties as well, even you on email. And so uh, I knew that before test day, I need to get acclimatized to what uh, would happen on test day. And so uh, for five days right before test day, as in the Monday to Saturday, about five, six days, I'd taken a test right at the time when I was supposed to take on test day. So from mm -hmm. 10 to uh, ten to 1-ish, I was sitting with uh, a test taking the test from the top 1% portal itself. I had taken the official, all six official mocks earlier and my score ranges were in uh, 740 to 780. So I was, uh, I was comfortable that way, but I really wanted to get acclimatized to what would happen on the test day. So on test day, obviously there were nerves because the stakes are higher. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, it, the, the original edition is coming to an end and the focus edition is coming on. So all of those things were in my mind, but the fact that I'd, I just sat for the past week in that mm. same spot um, as in in one spot taking the test at the same time. I think that really helped me. Uh, during uh, on test day, I mean, uh, I'd reached about half an hour before and uh, 10 minutes before the test, I'd uh, started filling in the details and all on the screen. I I'd, I'd went with VQRA. Uh, that was my order. And so mm. I started with verbal. The first two or three questions were a bit dicey for me. All three were SC questions only coincidentally and SC was my strong suit but I still felt like the sentences are unusually long. Oh, I, it was probably my nerves but once I got through the first two, three questions in about five, six minutes after that it was fairly smooth sailing. Want had been good for me. I'd, apart from I think one mock, uh, one official mock, I think I'd got a 51 on all mocks uh, but on test day I mean I got a Q60 but, but that's fine. Uh, probably a silly mistake here or there. I had finished uh, the quant section about 30 seconds in. And IR and AWA, AWA you would mention the flaw assumption. We can right. evaluate and recommendation parameters and what uh, the inconsistent evidence, the irrelevant evidence, all those things. So I just, I went with that exact flow. I was done with my essay in about 20 minutes. And good, yeah, good, the test taking experience was fairly smooth thanks to the time I had given. All right. And no unusual question apart from the initial essay hiccup that you had a little bit. Maybe yeah. that was nerves. So. That, that was nerves for sure. That, it wasn't unusual. I mean, uh, on on in the even in the top uh, uh, top uh, PDF, the first 100 questions that you provided, uh, that had quite a few questions which were fairly long. And the entire sentence was marked as a sentence mm -hmm. that you had to analyze. So, I mean, it wasn't new, but probably just sitting there for the first two, three questions. Apart from that, I didn't find anything unusual. I'd, I'd got about one or two boldface questions, but I mean, boldface was what we began CR with. So I was fairly comfortable there. And that one page document about the steps of boldface, about the keywords exactly. and all, I kept reading it in the last week. I mean, I got time. It takes hardly 10, 15 minutes. Keep reading it, keep going through it and understand how to eliminate options. What exactly is going on? Exactly. That would be helpful. So, Swastik, now being on the other side, what would you suggest people should not do? Because uh, I know what you should do, we say a lot, but according mm -hmm. to you, individually, mm -hmm. would you like to tell that, okay, don't do this, don't do, or maybe do this, uh, any error logs you made, amount of yeah. practice, anything, I mean, whatever, I'm not really putting words in your mouth, but mm -hmm. should do and shouldn't do, please tell. Yeah, I mean, I did maintain uh, an error log when I'd begun classes. Uh, and and even when I be began practice for verbal, for quant, I didn't really. Uh, but mm -hmm. for verbal, I did because I was skeptical about my verbal skills. And I knew how challenging it would be to get to a V40 plus score in verbal for me personally. So uh, I did put an effort that I maintained my logs and I kept adding small comments with each and every question. Mm -hmm. For instance, uh, in the avoid section of, uh, uh, of CR, uh, the the avoid parameter that you'd given under octave where we were supposed to avoid superlatives 
on the first uh, 20 passages or so that we'd solved in the classes. I think I'd got about four to five questions wrong just because I did not eliminate a question on the basis of the extremes. So that was right. something that right after the first 20 passages, I knew that this is something I should look out for very carefully, very judiciously. So, I mean, I mean, just like that. And for what not to do, I mean, I personally believe the GMAT is a game of inertia. I mean, the faster you go and the harder you go in the shortest particular span of time, that really helps a lot. Uh, for, for me personally, because like I said, from July to October were high pressure months. The last week I'd spent about 12, 13 hours plus per day. That included a mock, that included a verbal sectional and analysis for all of these things. I, I was done with the quant 700 to 800 level question. So for any quant question that came, I was fairly certain whether I should just ignore that one question and try to get the other 30 correct and the backward counting for the timing. I mean, in on test day, I wasn't looking at the time for quant at all. It was coming absolutely naturally to, naturally to me and there, there was about 30 seconds left when I ended the test. But for verbal, uh, I kept a strict mark at uh, the 18 minute mark where I tried to be done with at least 50% of, uh, I mean, the right. 30 half minute mark, the 18th question. Uh, right, right. That, that is, that is the only check I kept because we're not sure mm -hmm. about what the test is throwing at us. I mean, I checked my ESR, the initial level of questions that I received were in the higher medium to lower difficulty range. And that kept increasing from there. So it's not necessarily true that you start off with the extremely easy questions and go to the extremely difficult questions there. That is what I personally faced. So uh, it's best if you just have broader checks for yourself and not a very detailed per question check for verbal if your verbal is weak. For quant, I think the two minute rule is absolutely perfect. If you can't okay. solve it in two, two and a half minutes on test day, you probably can't solve it. It's best to let go of that one question to get the other 30, right? That'll get you in the Q51, Q50 range anyway. And uh, towards the end, did you have some sabbatical days or did you, were you continuing to work? You said 12, no. 13 hours. That means you were on a break from work. No. It? Yeah. So uh, 31st October was uh, the day when the compliances end, all the tax audit reports, everything, they end. Uh, so, so anyway, uh, right after October, there's very little pressure at the office. I'm managing my own firm, actually. I'm working at my own firm. So, uh, so so that way, I mean, it became a little easier for me personally. But a sabbatical is not necessary if uh, the effort is more consistent. What I do recommend for sure in the week before test day is to sit at the same uh, time when you're when you when you uh, scheduled your test and take the test at that particular point of time. It isn't necessary to take an official mock. Uh, I recommend the top one percent mocks because the GMAT level can't go higher than that. That is what I I spoke to a lot of other students that were at top one percent and. Otherwise, also, top one percent mocks are absolutely the benchmark. If if you are doing even decently on it, I personally believe that test day shouldn't be an issue, especially for verbal. I mean, quant one or two questions here and there, an outlier might always come your way, but verbal is absolutely sorted. I'm so happy, superb to know that this finally came through. So, are you applying right now? I mean, are you in the application phase? No, so I'm not applying this year. I'm applying in the current year. Uh, I'd spoken to Ranjika and the team and right. uh, my elder brother. He's already in the US. All of them recommended that I go next year because uh, I'm I'm 23, 24 right now. So it's fine if I get a little more experience. Okay, and, okay. Uh, great, yeah. great to know. I'm really, really happy. And uh, whenever you apply and after that, before the interview, do watch the KTW series fully. I've already watched the KTW series actually. Any word uh, on that, please? Yeah, so uh, I personally uh, struggled. There were a few very short astrophysics passages in CR and a few very biology heavy passages, evolution theory and all those things. So right out of the bat, I thought that maybe KTW would be a good way to go for me because for yeah. topics which I associated with business, philosophy, literature, yeah. these things, these things were fairly easier for me. And I mean, yeah. it's not like, uh, the octave principles just won't apply. It's just that it's a it was a personal mental block for me. So it made most sense for me to just go through the KTW videos, not mm -hmm. not particularly watching it at 1x also. I mean, I just wanted to go through it explicitly for the purpose of helping my CR. Right. And right. it was really a game-changing experience for me. I started looking at uh, the biology-related uh, passages completely differently. And... I started understanding that the astrophysics passages don't matter too much. And on test day, I got one very long astrophysics passage, which I think I uh, 
got reasonably correct because I probably got one question wrong out of all on RC as per my ESR. So I mean, the KTW series really helped me, and it it does give you a lot of perspective, a, a very well rounded one particular thread through and through, through time, through space. I I I enjoyed it a lot. Super. Thanks for making time. So stick in that case. All the very best. Whenever you apply, do keep in touch. And um, I, I mean, it will always be a pleasure hearing back from you anytime. Absolutely. Right? Thank you so much, sir. And thank you to everyone at Talk 1%. And I wish uh, everyone the best of luck for their upcoming.